all about you, all around you. The Necronomicon also speaks of the Migu, agents of Nyarlathotep, who come from the universe beyond the Eighth Gate, a place called Yagoth. Alhazred seems to speak about UFOs and abductions in one comment about the Migu. It is of these same spawn of Yagoth that it is said do carry the minds of wizards and other men unto Yagoth, clad with an amphoria of strange metal and design. With these minds thus preserved, they are thus able to make the trip across the gulf under the rim. This seems to reference metal vehicles that can travel to other spheres without astral flight. He also speaks about machines that are used to converse with the abducted. In a state of dreamless sleep do these minds wait, requiring no sustenance until awakened by the Migu and through strange mechanizations and thus given the power to converse of vision and of hearing without the mortal body being intact or that is connected to the mind. Here is depicted what appears to be a machine because it doesn't resemble the magical symbols. This group was sent by the Elder Lords. It is a spirit being whose duty it is to watch over you, perhaps provided as a counterweight to the Jinn and their influence, which is mainly detrimental. They, like the demons, demand sacrifice and ritual in order to invoke directly. If the calling of a Watcher is done inappropriately, the Watcher may turn on you and slay you. When conjuring a Watcher, you must use symbols located on your person or hand gestures in order to remind them of the covenant they have sworn with our race. The Necronomicon claims that humans came extremely late in the game. Alhazred reiterates the incredible dangers that face humans from the world without. Alhazred also makes an interesting remark regarding the possible construction method of the pyramids. He speaks of a race of human beings who called themselves the Thul. From the earth did the people of Muthul mine a strange ore which they did place in baskets made of lead. This ore did they place in great ovens to burn and thus create the etheric energies that they used within their cities. With these energies did they bring light to lamps without oil or wick, and also did they use these energies to move the great stones of which they built their great cities. And for those of you who have seen Hollywood Insider's full disclosure, you should know that Abdul Alhazred confirms for us the existence of vampires and even the ancient Sumerians who predate all the vampire legends of medieval Europe by thousands of years had a word for vampire, Akakuru. Alhazred makes mention that these teachings have been forgotten by the bulk of man and only the worshippers of the ancient ones still retain them. Today, we call this group the Illuminati, the Enlightened Ones, a collection of tightly woven secret societies with these teachings at their core. Alhazred says that places where one intends on doing a calling should be high in the mountains and preferably near the ocean. The place should be remote and the further from the nearest person, the better. The calling site should be clean. Any type of spirit may be summoned and detained until it answers your questions. The dead, the gods, and even the souls of the unborn may be summoned. He says that some spirits aren't worth conjuring, for they may not have the intellect, sanity, or power to do as you command. Alhazred warns that if you've done the ritual in accordance with its proper procedure and the spirit or demon does not arrive, do not persist and finish the ritual quietly. If this is the case, it means that the spirit is presently attending another ritual or is off doing work that he has been previously assigned to. It also mentioned that changing the ritual or symbols in the slightest may render them useless or worse yet, create a broken gate to the outside. Ah, there. See? The door. You left it wide open. Mm. Uh. And leaving the door open is the worst mistake any employee can make because... He then goes on to discuss the proper etiquette for a demon summoning. He says that after the demon is invoked and present, wait for it to address you. After this, ask it to speak clearly, in a pleasant tone, in your native tongue. Also charge it to speak softly, so that its booming voice does not deafen you. Abdul recommends that you gracefully tell the spirit to contain its odor so that those present at the ritual will not faint. Also remember not to make a sacrifice that is too large or too small. If too small, the spirit will be offended, and if too large, the spirit may consume too much and become difficult to control. Carefully matching every child to their ideal monster to produce superior screen, refined into clean, dependable energy. Alhazred claims that if you're opening a gate, as opposed to an invocation, that you will see the respective gate forming above the altar. He speaks of it as if it were a hole in space formed by the ritual that you can physically hop into. But in the air above the altar, whereupon thou wilt presently see the gate opening for thee, 
and the spirit messenger of the sphere, greeting thee in a clear voice, and giving thee a name, which thou must remember, for that is the name of the passing of the gate, which thou must use each time thou passest thereby. The spirit messenger will meet thee, and, if thou not know thy name, he will forbid thee entrance, and thou wilt fall to earth immediately. The Necronomicon states that these spirits and demons are generally adverse to light, and will avoid sun and moonlight. But on overcast nights, or moonless nights, these demons are unrestrained and move freely about. They would certainly be satisfied to see a sky that was forever cloudy. Opening of gates to other planes of existence is called the walking. In this, your physical body lies upon a dais, while your astral body takes flight to walk among the stars. During this time, you must assign your personal watcher to guard over your body. Basically, if either body dies while you're plugged into the matrix, you're screwed. He also recommends to be completely vegetarian seven days before you go on your astral constitutional. And three days before the ritual of the body trip, you should have nothing to eat at all except juices. Having meat in one system may affect the experience, or maybe it's best to have absolutely nothing inside the guts of a body you're about to take a trip out of. Now many out there have seen countless celebrities doing this, the devil hand sign. This hand gesture is called the sign of Vor and is one of the four signs used during a satanic ritual. The sign of Vor is used whenever someone wants to ask something of the old one and the old ones only. As you can see, three of these four signs have worked their way into popular culture. The second gesture is easily the most famous of all and it's called the sign of Kish. The sign of Kish is used to break down the barriers and open a portal to the outside. The third sign is also rather familiar, a gesture made famous by Adolf Hitler. This gesture is called the gesture of cough. It is used in a ritual to seal the gate or portal that was created by the sign of Kish. The fourth is the elder sign and apparently is used for general protection against antagonistic spirits and those who would send magic your way. All of these gestures are intended to be done with the left hand. The abilities that magic offers its users is vast and varied. Every spirit may not be useful and some spirits are good at some jobs and incapable of others. Each has their specific abilities and respective symbol and ritual. Some spirits, like the Mad Dog Azikov, are extremely powerful and hard to control. Hollywood Insider's Dark Stars covers many demon-granted abilities that countless celebrities have admitted to using. And finally, to wrap it all up, here's a quote from Al Hazred concerning magicians. Wisely did Ibn Shakabeo say, Happy is the town where no wizard hath lain, and happy the town at night whose wizards are all ashes. These are rather strong words for an admitted black magician, and are faithful to Al Hazard's largely apologetic tone. Well friends, I hope you found this video eye-opening. I'll close by saying this, there should be no secret keepers of the truth, and that only the willingly ignorant and profane should remain ignorant and profane. The truth belongs to every mind that can manage to comprehend it, because these truths have been withheld from us not out of mercy for our sanity, but to prevail over us and rule in our place. And now that I've shared with you a bit of what I know, it's your turn to share with others what you know. Take care, keep learning, and thanks for watching.